PJ, hi, how are you? Um, just wanted to start by saying a massive thanks uh, to you for coming here today and having a chat about the Hello, How Are You campaign and uh, giving us some time just to talk about meaningful conversations. Um, no, thanks you know, for having me, sure. sure yeah. just absolutely delighted. And like the, the Hello, How Are You campaign is, it's, I suppose, very much about uh, meaningful conversations. It's Mental Health Ireland encouraging people to say hello and ask the question, how are you? But in a really meaningful way. Yeah. So we're going to get straight into it. I'm going to ask <laughs> yeah, you. <laughs> yeah. um, when is the last time that you've had like a really kind of meaningful uh, conversation with someone? God, it happens an awful lot now. To be honest, like since mm. I told my own story, it happens kind of a lot. Like, I mean, I would say three days ago was the last time. In fact, it was probably yesterday. I, yesterday was a... Uh, it was a bad story. Unfortunately, I got bad news about a man who I was in hospital with. Uh, you know, and I just, uh, I, I, ra I tweeted about it and put it on social media. And then you end up into, I know they're online conversations, but they're still conversations mm -hmm. with people who like immediately come and tell you their story, which is kind of the side of social media I really didn't expect, you know. It is a positive thing in a way. Mm -hmm. Uh, that people can just reach out and say that happens has happened to me or I'm struggling myself and uh, you know the thing is they ask me what they should do and I don't have the answers you know I, I'm not a professional uh, which shows maybe how desperate people are that they're asking comedians and you know lads off local radio what they're supposed to do instead of asking you know actual pros because they can't find access or whatever it is or they literally just don't know where to go or want what how to put one foot in front of the mm. other so, I mean, literally yesterday, uh, I was saying to someone, just get to your GP or get to your friends and like get to anyone that's close to you. And uh, some people say, oh, it's really scary, but I'll do it. And other people say, oh, I've done it, but it's no one's taking me serious. And yeah. my answer to that is always just to go and never take no for an answer. You know, just knock down doors or, or talk to the next person who will listen, you know. Because uh, if I have any anything to say, my experience shows me that people will listen it just sometimes takes a bit of a bit of insistence on your part you know do you think that you said there like when you shared your own story in a way has that kind of opened a door do you feel to people having those kind of conversations oh jesus in my life yeah, yeah. i mean yeah. hugely yeah yeah i mean i was only talking about it maybe last week uh i was chatting to a friend of mine and, and it just suddenly dawned on me when i was chatting to him kind of going What's amazing about saying you have mental health, or as I, I prefer to say mental illness problems, because just because of the way it related to me, mm. you know, uh, is when you say you're sick or you're struggling, people are so happy and, and immediate to, uh, they're so complicit in, in the cover up, you know. So the first thing people will always say is, don't worry, I won't say anything, yeah. or I won't do anything, don't, don't worry, your secret's safe with me, or no, yeah, whatever it is, no one has to know. Like, it, it feel, people feel like they're supporting you by, immediately saying no matter what happens I'll, I'll be a part of the cover up you know okay. and that's an experience I've had a lot of you know even when I got out of hospital like one of the funny moments for me was I got out of hospital I was feeling great uh, and I sat down at a local pub and I was chatting to the lads going uh, I'd be, I just want you to know like this is going to come out in the press and I've been in a mental hospital for the last I, I was in a mental hospital three months ago for 11 weeks and they were all like oh yeah no yeah I was like <laughs> nobody mentioned it you know yeah. Like, I've been out, I'm healthy, I've been here months and still nobody said a word, you know. Uh, but since I told the story, it's like, everybody wants to say it. So, like, when you, I, I never really understood when you heard people saying, oh, when you speak, it helps somebody else. Mm. You know, I never really understood that. I didn't get it until uh, now that people will walk up to you. Like, strangers will walk up to you and say, listen, uh, I, I'm fair play to you like I kind of that I, I see the reaction that got so I'm going to go and try and get the same reaction myself you know mm. um, so it happens a lot yeah and it it's um it's interesting because I suppose the hello how are you is about starting conversations yeah so what, what's happening to you is you're having conversations with whether you like them or not you know but if people are stopping you <laughs> yeah, having yeah. that but I suppose in some ways when you do tell your story you're kind of saying to people yeah I'm open to talking about this um which is really good and I think with the campaign it's like, you know, if I'm going to ask you hello and ask you, how are you? And I really want to know the answer, which I think is, you know, people are telling you, obviously. I know, answers, yeah. Well, that's know? a huge thing, isn't yeah. it? Like, because in Ireland, like, it's been so accepted that you meet mm. people and go, how's it going? Grand. How are you? Not bad. Mm. You know, what's the story? Same as ever. No news is good news. You know, you're, yeah. you feel like that if you actually said, I'm kind of shite, yeah. uh, that it's it'd be seen as bad manners. Mm. 
you know, actually answering the question you feel would be bad manners, like, you know, uh, yeah. in, in a way, but it's actually not like that, you know, in, especially when it's people you know, like whatever about walking into shops, how are you, Grant, whatever. Yeah. I mean, it would be just as strange to walk in in the shop and someone's saying, how's it going? And you say, oh, I'm actually feeling, <laughs> you know. Like, Having two minutes, can we go out yeah, the back Yeah, yeah, it's not chat? the appropriate yeah. place, you know. Uh, but it, it, but uh, it isn't what you think it is, mm. you know. Like, it, it is amazing how receptive people will be if you, if you, if you do say, I'm I'm struggling, you know. Mm. Like in the workplace was where I got mostly surprised by that. Like work for me, I was like, whatever happens, no one in work can ever find out, you know. Whatever happens in my private life, my friends might find out, my family might find out, my partner might find out. It might be all that, you know. But the idea, and it sounds so ridiculous now, but you know, when you're ill, you don't see straight, you know. Mm. But for me, like, being dead was better than being ashamed, you know. It yeah. really was. Being mm. dead was better than being ashamed. And to be shamed in, in the workplace, you know, to be seen as weak or whatever was something that terrified me. And then if I went in, it got to the point I just couldn't hide it anymore. I had to go into work and say, I need to go to hospital. I have to be hospitalized. And everybody just knew exactly how to handle it, you know. I was so surprised by how it was handled by everybody. Uh, and, and that's something as well. Like, I think if you, so if you have a conversation with someone, you're kind of assuming, like, you build it up and it's like, no one has ever gone through this before. I'm dealing, the only person who's ever dealt with something like this. And then you open up and you have a conversation and you think, oh my God, I'm not alone. Yeah, well, that's what happened. Yeah. That's why I don't like saying mental health to a, to a point because mm. the mental health conversation, in my point mind, became something different. It, it became like a, uh, you know, you, you, say, it's, it's, you say to people, oh, go for a walk or, you know, make sure you get some exercise, hang out with friends, have a coffee, you know, um, eat greens. And when you get to a certain point where none of that is going to make a difference, mm. you know, you have to, you, you know, when you're mentally ill, you need 24 hour round the clock care, you know, or you need to at least be talking to a doctor every yeah. couple of days or, you know, you need to be watched and you need to, you know, when you become a danger to yourself or... Some people have mental health problems that just aren't cool yet, you know, like schizophrenia yeah. or delusions. And, you yeah. know, and, and people that don't, you don't hear about those people at all, mm. like, you know, at all yet. So uh, that's why I kind of got alienated from that, because the mental health conversation for me became about, oh, you know, I was feeling a little down the other day and I called my friend and we went to the cinema and now I feel much better. And it's that kind like, of prevention and resilience. It was, piece. Yeah, 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 which is which is great, yeah. and that's brilliant. But that is a different conversation to someone mm. who is really, really struggling, mm. and you know their thoughts are, you know, their thoughts are trying to kill them, or their thoughts are yeah. trying to put them in a really bad place, or they're battling against uh, a really articulate voice inside their head that is trying to convince them that they're completely worthless. It, it, like they're two different. Places, yeah. you know. Well, I uh, think so. Anyway, oh no, I, I agree, and I do think there's a place. You, you said it yourself. Like there's a place for both. You know, if yeah, someone's yeah, on their definitely. knees asking them the question, "How are you?" Isn't going to sort them out. Maybe it's like bringing them or saying to them, "You well, need to go yeah, see a yeah. GP, well, you need to see a professional." But, but the, it does start to convert. It does yeah. Yeah, start to get you out of your shell. You yeah, know? yeah. I was so lucky that the people in my life, the three people I was closest to as well, were women who just, you know didn't have the same stigma maybe as some of the lads would have yeah, had yeah. because what I've noticed is women just will not take no for an answer you know <laughs> they just won't you know when it comes to talking about your feelings and they know something's wrong the persistence was yeah. was such a, a brilliant thing you know whereas some some of the lads just like oh, I don't really know what to say to you if you need that and, and you know like yeah. I, the, the sentiment is brilliant but uh, I I do need something and I don't know what it is but like if you could work with me on it like, you know, yeah 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 uh, what is is, is that's a different thing too yeah. but. and and I suppose with with the conversation like I think a little bit like what you're saying so in a preventative way so you kind of sense someone is maybe you know there's something going on but it's not too serious like do you think by having that conversation it's like the small conversation can have a big difference. Oh yeah, well it'll definitely mm. lead, you know, if you keep having the conversation, even if you know something is wrong and the person mm. you're talking to isn't being, isn't really coming forth, you know, that's the problem. Sometimes it's erosion. Yeah. You have to keep just chipping away at the same person before they'll say, yeah, okay, right, I am actually in trouble. Because you're trying to convince yourself you're fine for a lot of the time. That's a huge thing oh, too. Oh God, yeah. You know, like you're, you start to slide and you the first thing you do is say, I'm, I'll be okay. I'll just, ha if I can just get through this week, you know, and then, oh, if I can just get through this month, 
So people are asking, are you all right? And you're all right. And you're going, yeah, yeah, I'm grand, I'm grand. But you're getting worse and worse mm. and worse. You know, and then it's like, you know, oh, if I can just get to Christmas or if I can just get to the, my ma's birthday or if I can just get, and it's, the, the line just keeps moving and moving. And mm. then a year and a half later, you're completely, like you know, I was going to say a word you don't want me to say, but you're in a really bad place. Like, just you know, flip it out. And, flip and, it. And, and at that stage, that's when maybe you'll turn around to that person who's been asking you consistently, mm. are you okay? Are you? And you'll turn around and go, no, I'm not actually. I've, I've been on the slide for ages. Yeah. Yeah, maybe so yeah and I know my experience I had a chat with someone recently and I said how are you and the person said um, yeah I'm good and I was like I know this person's not good and yeah. I actually said to the person you seem really flat and she texted me that evening to say thank you for seeing me it's the first time I felt seen in a long time because yeah. I noticed something and I was thinking oh my god this stuff works like it actually you know it works because I, I didn't take the no for an answer yeah and I took it a step further exactly yeah has there been a time when, say, you've maybe had a chat with someone and you kind of maybe struggled with, oh, no, I don't know what to say to them next? Or, yeah, loads. Yeah. Uh, loads. And to be honest, I wouldn't. Uh, un it's unfortunate looking back on it because I really didn't know what I was supposed to do. And I still don't. But I guess mm. that's, you know, that's it's accepting that that makes it easier. It actually wasn't until I was talking to the likes of my friend Stephanie and stuff, you know, and my partner, um, and I was taught that they were they, they were handling things in a way I never probably would have known how to you know yeah so I would say to them I'm in such a bad way and then they you know or uh, I'm, I'm not feeling great and their reaction was okay listen I'm gonna I'm gonna leave the ringer on the phone 24-7 okay you can always call me there's never gonna be a bad time I'm always around I will make time for you that's you know th those are the things that really started to put me in a place where oh, I actually have people looking out for me here, you know, yeah. that maybe there's a bit of value to this life after all, you know, people that were just turning up over and over again and, you know, convincing me that, you know, th that even when they didn't know what to do, that they would go to the doctor with me or that they would come to a psychiatrist with me or they would drive me there and they'd be there when I came out and they'd sit in the waiting room and take notes and come up with questions for me before I went in. Yeah. Those are the things that made the world like bearable, you know, those the people who were like, they were like, I don't know what to do, but here's actions we can take together. So mm. you reassure you, you're not alone. And, and that's brilliant because you don't have to be an expert. So like if no. I want to support someone, a friend, a family member, work colleague, I don't have to be an expert. Sometimes it's just about being there. Yeah, but they, yeah, it's yeah. exactly like, it, that's the thing. Like, you were always trying to figure, a lot of lads just want to have the answer. You know, I think it's about accepting so when someone says to you, I'm struggling, what will I do? Does she go, I really don't know, but we're going to do something. Mm. Like we're, we're going to, we're going to start by going to a doc and then we're going to see where that leads us. And you're not in it on your own. Like we're going to figure this out, you know, one way or the other, we'll figure it out. Mm. Uh, it's kind of the resignation that you don't know what to do, but you insist you will work it out. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that determination. That determination. You were, yeah. you were saying with some of the women in your life were t not taking no for an answer. No, they not were at like, all. we will not until we oh, get to yeah, the end yeah. of this. Like, oh, you're yeah. getting in the yeah. car. We're going to the hospital. We yeah. are going to the doctor. We are, we are going here. We're going to go out. Um, you know, my partner saying, we're getting, you're going for a walk today. Mm. We're going to do our best to distract you, you know? Yeah. Uh, you're going to take the meds. You're, I don't care about your side effects. Mm. You're feeling they they won't last, you know. And all these buttons that make you panic over and over again, having someone just repeatedly try and take the pressures off with them. And I know it's an awful lot to ask for someone. Um, one of the big problems I think that's not addressed at all is how people who are close to people with depression get all, are oh. supposed to get by. That's a huge thing. The you family know? members, supporters, and, yeah, and that's yeah. something in Mental Health Ireland. We actually have programs to support supporters. Oh, and that's you know. That, like, mm. Oh man, that's so important, yeah. you know. Yeah. I didn't realise the effect it was having on the people around me until you know, when I was well. Mm. And then we could joke about it and they were like, you are stressed out, you shouldn't <laughs> say me, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think what I'm thinking about when you were saying that now as well is, you know, this Irish thing of like, well, it's not my business. Yeah, um, yeah. It's like, you know, that's not my business. I'm not going to go down that road with that person or whatever. But sometimes we kind of have to make it our business. Yeah, big time. Yeah, I think, yeah, you know, that's, I do think that's changing. Like, mm. definitely with the younger ones, you know, younger people seem to just not care about those old weird yeah, social yeah. rules that we had, you know. Yeah, yeah. Mind your business and don't be saying anything and people will think you're yeah. nosy or yeah. you don't want anyone thinking that someone in the family is you know, losing it or, yeah, yeah. you know, all the stupid terminology we had when we were young, you know, like uh, your Uncle Jim is taken to the bed, know. you know, taken to the bed, like he's, he's chronically depressed, he hasn't been out of bed in three months because he's 
so depressed or he's a bit of a character because he's got complete chronic anxiety and hides behind walls, you know, and yeah. all these things. And he, thankfully, I do think that's being broken down a huge amount. Thanks yeah. to young, like it really is younger. It's the whole Gen Z. You yeah. know, people love to <laughs> piss all over Gen Z, but they're the ones that are like changing yeah. everything. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it is, it's different. Like the conversations are definitely different and, and being open. And I think it, but I think part of that is information. Like if, if you were feeling, I think like say if I was a teenager or in my early 20s and I wasn't feeling great, like I couldn't just go and get information, like no. pick up my phone and Google, like, you know, feeling whatever. I th do think information is key. And I know for us, a big part of it is we're saying to people like, you know, find out where somebody can go to. So if you're having a chat with someone and in some cases with hello, how are you? It's not always the the really heavy chats. Like connection is really important. Yeah. Um, and it's about like, I don't know, like being in a shop and giving someone eye contact um, yeah. or like smiling at someone walking down the street or picking up the phone to someone you haven't talked to in a while. Last year for the hello, how are you campaign? I got a text from someone who had been kind of in a runner club with. She didn't know it was Hello, How Are You? But it happened to be. And she texts me to say, hey, you haven't been up for a while and love to see you. And I was thinking, oh my God, she thought about me today, randomly texts me. And I felt really good. Yeah, You yeah. know, I was tired, a long day. And I just thought, oh my God, simple. Well, like you said, the other, like you were mm. talking about a friend of yours and then all of a sudden she said, I just felt seen. Mm. You know, that's a, that's a really big thing because yeah. I, I suppose you try when you're sick to make yourself invisible you yeah. know part of the game is if i play this right no one will notice yeah you know and then when somebody does it's probably more positive than negative yeah like, I, maybe yeah you know and i heard uh, you being interviewed before and you were kind of saying like for you you thought you were acting normal and oh yeah you were completely. like no, I'm, everything's normal oh, no one yeah. sees anything and oh yeah. and then you go like and then eventually you say oh I'm, I'm not well at all and everyone goes i knew there was something off with you yeah yeah and you're like well why didn't you say that and you know they're like yeah, oh sure yeah. i didn't like like you said I, I don't know what to say or i didn't want to intrude or i didn't know if you'd want me to know or mm. you know but the amount of people that go i knew it. i was in here the last thing i knew there was something wrong with you you know and you're like okay thanks for that <laughs> you know yeah. like if enough people uh, and it's not their fault like, mm. it's no one's fault but like if if five of those ten people you know within that short space of time had said there's something wrong with you mm. or, or like what's the story here what's going on yeah, I probably would have sped up the process okay. to get in yeah because I was going to ask help. you maybe what would what would make a difference do you know what I mean so you know someone like you know we've already said it like someone says well how are you and then they move on and they don't want to hear the answer. Yeah. So would it have made a difference if they were like, you know, at, said, hey, how are you? And like, you knew they were really genuine. Like they actually, oh, they're going to give yeah. me the time. Yeah. Or, or one of my friends who had an eating disorder was saying like that one of the things you should, she thought really helped was when people stopped saying, yeah, you're looking very skinny or you've yeah. looked, you know, it was when people started saying, you, you're just, you don't look well. You look sick. Yeah. You don't look well. And that was a different okay. sort of conversation that all of a sudden they went, all right, because when someone says you've lost weight, then it's like mission accomplished, you know? Okay, yeah. Oh, this is working. Or, you know, you look too skinny. It's like, yeah, of course. Well, good, you know, to yeah. you maybe. But when you, you look sick, you don't look well. Those are things that I think are actually good to say, you know? Yeah. You don't have to say you look desperate, but, you know, you, you don't look yourself. Yeah. You're, you're not who you were two months ago you're like what's going on you know those are I think good questions yeah. to ask they're good questions to ask me not yeah. maybe not for everyone but yeah. as a rule at home maybe yeah because I was going to say as well like if you were to give advice to someone right and someone is saying like look I know someone in my life they could probably do with having a conversation I don't really know where to start I know that's a really general question but where would you start with that person to say well look this is from your own experience yeah if somebody just looks like they don't want to I, I mean I, it depends who it is but there's Maybe it's because I've done it a few times now, you know, like you send some people a text message saying if you need anything, whatever, mm. and then you send them like all the links to, you know, the different numbers that are out there and different facilities that are great at bringing people out. Like you let them know that you don't have to talk to someone. You can actually start by just texting people, you know, that there's unknown people out there you can start texting with that yeah. will text you back immediately and, and then reinforce that, you know, like if this is going anywhere or you're not feeling great and... I don't think you look that well. I'm here for you no matter what. Like, you know, like Stephanie said to me, 24 hours a day, phone's on the ring or I'm never going to not answer. Just, you know, I think those are the things you, mm. 
you say to people, try and make them make them as as comfortable as as possible uh, in trusting yeah. you, I suppose. And even knowing that, say, Stephanie was on the other end of the phone, even if you didn't have to ring her, I think probably knowing that she was there for you probably made a difference, did it? I well, yeah, it did. Yeah, it did because I because when it came to crisis point, I did. You know, there was a day I woke up and I thought, this is the day I'm not going to get through it, and okay. and uh, and I used the number and. And I'm still here, I think, because of that, you know. Okay. There was one day when I woke up and thought, like, that's it. I just cannot get through today. You know, it was half four in the morning. And I did think, this is the day. Like, I'm not getting through it. No matter what happens, like, today is the day. Just the the weight just hit me so much harder than it had before. It was like, I've been putting it off and I've been taking sedatives and I've been seeing a doc two days a week and they're trying to put me in a hospital and I can't really accept it and... Nobody really understands no matter how much I speak about it and the message was there again from Stephanie and it was a matter of like answer that message or okay. I'll walk into the day and see what happens and to be honest I really do think that was the, the uh, like that was the, uh, like, I don't know I don't want to be too grim about it but I really do think I mightn't have seen the end of that day okay. and I made the call and at half four in the morning uh, she just says come out and get to me and I went to her house and r r I just remember getting to the point to the worst point I've ever ever been where I was physically curled up in a ball and sitting in the front of her car shaking like a leaf and just like rolling back and forward and saying I just can't take it I can't take it I can't do it I can't do it anymore I can't do it anymore like just just constantly happening like unable to shake it off and and she put her hand on my shoulder and just says like just try and think like right now all your needs are met she kept saying it all right now all your needs are met right now you have everything you need you know and I promise it's going to get better. I promise it's going to get better, you know? Yeah. And and that was the lowest. That was the point where I went, right, I've got to get into a hospital, you know? And then you and it's, and then you, you ring the hospital and you say, right, I'll go in. And they go, no problem, we'll see you in two and a half weeks. And, and you're, you're like, holy Jesus. shit, yeah. I'm not going to last two and a half weeks. Like, that's, it, it feels so, every day feels like an eternity, you know? Yeah. Uh, but it does, time does pass. Yeah. And, and it all becomes... A blur, you know, as torturous as as that whole time of being sick feels, that day feels like, it, in memory, that feels like longer than the entire, you know, illness was. Yeah. So, And you, Stephanie sounds magic. I think we might get yeah, her in for a podcast. Stephanie you know? Freisner, yeah. <laughs> uh, she has her own podcast. Yeah, she, I think, yeah. yeah, but she's, yeah, she's, she is brilliant. Yeah. yeah, she's amazing, you know. Yeah. And like, she's not a professional, like, you no, know, she's so just she's a friend. friend. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just it just friend. shows you the power of, like, she obviously loves you. Uh, obviously wants to see you safe and well and the power of that like is unreal and yeah, it oh, sounds really. really determined yeah, yeah yeah and that's yeah and that's it you know like you just, uh, like I suppose all you can do is tell people that you're there you know yeah and that you'll go anywhere you with someone that they need to go you know yeah uh, it's isolation I think that scares the shit out of you I think you know it's the isolation of oh if I go here on my own I won't be able or mm. if I go here I'll fall apart or you know uh being told you're you're just not going to be on your own like mm. you know that's why going into hospital is so frightening because no one can walk through that door with you you go you get there and you have to walk in the door and you have no idea what's on the other side you know you're walking and the, like you're just like what am I going to see here yeah. you know and the last thing you think is what it actually is which is just a really nice place full of great people who want to look after you yeah but that's not what being sick tells you, you know, you're thinking one flew over the cuckoo's yeah, yeah, nest yeah. and, you know, you yeah. know, you're like going, your head is going completely barmy and like convincing you that it's like, you know, full of crazy people. Yeah. It's just not, you know, it's just not what it is. It's and I like, think that as well, when people are feeling not well in themselves, it's like, and I know I would have done this in the past, whereas I would have started building it up and I'm like, I'm not great today. Oh, sugar, I'm going to be worse tomorrow and I'm going to be worse. What I'm going to be like in two weeks. Oh no. And it's like that ruminating and the, but it's that unknown piece, like, you know, going into, you know, an, an institution and you're like, oh, Jesus, don't know what to expect. You're walking in oh, on your own. Oh, yeah. And then the ruminations that you, it's such a tricky thing because you, you to try and make yourself feel better, mm. you th you sort of go, right, I'm going to think on, of all the things I have that other people don't. I'm going to just think about the positives. Mm. And you start saying to yourself, right, you know, anybody else would love to be in the position I'm in. You know, I'm not struggle I don't have debts and I've got good friends and I like most of the time when I'm not sick I like my job and you know I'm in a good position and my dogs are healthy my family's healthy and then 
the sickness tricks you again because what it does is it turns it around and then goes, you know, you have everything that everyone else in the world wants and you're oh, still God. not happy, you miserable yeah. bastard. You're useless. Yeah, you're yeah. so useless. You have it all and you still can't be happy. You're completely pathetic. And that's what happens. Mm. It's your you thoughts know. take over. I have a hoodie and the back of the hoodie, it says, I am more than my thoughts. And yeah. sometimes I think about that and I'm like, I'm more than them thoughts. Like those thoughts are just part of me. Like they're not going to take over, you know, and it's, I, I have to go into that place sometimes. Yeah. And I'm like reminding myself. But they, they do take thoughts. over. That's oh, the God, problem. Yeah. They do, yeah. you know, yeah, they yeah. do. Sometimes they win. Mm. Uh, and oh, it's just big time. Yeah. It's just reminding yourself yeah. that. Yeah, it's not permanent, you know. And and so just going back to some of the conversations you've had, say, since, you know, since I mean, you've been very public about your own experiences. Yeah. And I know when that happens, when someone with a profile is public, it does kind of give people that piece of like, oh, man, I'm not alone. This is great. And, and having conversations. And do you think there's been a bit of a ripple effect for other people to have conversations? Maybe not uh, just with you, but even with some of your friends. I, and some I your hope so. Uh, there's been sort of good and bad with it because... With my friends and the people around me, it's been uh, like really positive mm. as in how accepting they were and then how I've met other people then through work and stuff who've been had similar experiences. And, you know, you, it, it's become such an easy thing for us all to talk about now to each other, like for all of us, mm. you know, and not only talk about, laugh about, you know, like really like when it's when you're not feeling sick, there's so many funny parts to it you yeah, know yeah. like uh, the, the crack of being in a uh, hospital and realising that you're not allowed to call mini golf crazy golf oh yeah like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like super things like that you know and, and like when you have a bad day you know and like because yeah. we all have bad days yeah. I'm able to tell the difference now between a bad day and a bad life mm. but because I've been in hospital some of my friends aren't okay, so you yeah. know I have a bad day and they're like oh Jesus you're not going mental again are you? Yeah. I can't be going watching you going mental again and you know and there's there's humour in that you yeah, know yeah yeah of course uh, the bad side is yeah it, it, it's so prevalent that like you go on social media now and I know it, it, it sounds like it couldn't be true but it is true like I mean since we went on the late late it's hundreds of thousands of messages of people in trouble and I'm okay. not messing like I, it's hundreds of thousands of messages of people who have not got that like yeah and who are struggling like it's just it's terrifying you know yeah. and you can't keep up and you can't answer everyone you can't even read most of them like that whole week when that happened first uh, if I, if we hadn't known the reaction I would have been too scared to do it okay. that's the truth I yeah, would yeah. I, I would have been just completely intimidated thinking that was coming down the track uh, I'm really glad I did it now like but I would have been just so intimidating but the response was it was grim to be honest because okay. you just realised there's so many people and people saying to me that their kids don't know, their husband doesn't know, their wife doesn't know, their brothers and sisters don't know. Like, it was just crazy. Like, so now I know and nobody else does. And I am literally the wrong person. There's yeah. nothing I can do, you know. Uh, and that was the downside. That was the, that was the scary side. Mm. I, you, you hear everyone's had struggles this time or other, but you, I didn't realise it was... <laughs> like and, and everyone wonder, you know and I wonder on reflection when some of those people say contact you and, and, and you respond back or then they see like because you know you talk about being well now which is brilliant and people are like okay maybe I'll do what PJ did maybe I will get help maybe I will then feel in a good place so they might be reaching out now because you're the first person they've said it to maybe yeah and but like oh, of course and I'd like to think messages. you know then they some people say listen thanks so much for saying what you said I'm in St. Pat's cause of you and yeah. then you hear other people and they're like, I can't get in, I've no health insurance. And you think, oh man, like, and then you, you realise such a privilege it is to have certain levels of care. It shouldn't really be like that, but it is. Um, you know, so there's that as well. So there's always positives, but there's there's so much work to do as well, yeah. you know. Oh, look, big time. And I think, like sometimes I think for 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 me as someone who's working in mental health promotion and and thinking about like messaging and getting people having conversations, if you think too much about it, it's massive. So sometimes it is about what can we do on a day to day basis or what can I do in my own community? Um, and for you, I think you you're you know because you have a profile. I mean, you know, you, you went on the Late Late Show and you've done your own podcast about it. You've been able to reach a lot more people, and mm. and I'm a big believer in hope. And I think yeah. that's what you you've kind of sent out a message of hope. You know, in a way, it's like, look, lads, this happened to me. And, you know, 
I, I'm doing okay. Um, yeah, well, I'm doing more than okay. Hmm. Like, I've had the best year I've ever had since yeah. I got out. You know, it's actually given me a whole new lease of life, you know? Mm. I know it sounds bananas. It sounds like something you see in some stupid romantic movie or anything, but you get through that. You, like, the world is a different place, you know? Okay. Like, I know it sounds mad, but you hear music like you're a teenager again. You yeah. know, the, the air tastes better. I know that's crazy, but it does, you know? I've started indulging in passions I've... It was letting go to the wayside. I ride bikes every day. I go to watch football every week. I have points at one o'clock in the day because why Ooh. bleeding not? I don't care. You know, yeah. I've thrown caution to the wind and a lot uh, to the point that I thought maybe I'm gone manic. I went back mm. to the doctor thinking, I think I've lost it. I've gone the other way. And he goes, okay. no, you're just in a good mood. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, that was different too. Yeah. You know, when you, you become so unused to being in in good form, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, that, and, and as well, I think a huge part of it. Uh, is uh, like it's hard to see because when you're sick the world feels so big and you know no matter what you have doesn't feel important and everything all your problems feel so huge you know and then you you go to the docks and you go to the hospital and you go to your friends and they're all telling you these things like oh like I was I was slagging it off earlier but it does you know go for a walk get out try mm. and get exercise try and meet people try talk to people have coffee and you're like you know none of those things are going to make me feel better but what happens when you start feeling better is those little things become so much more important. Yeah. Like I always talk about when I went into the hospital so sick and one of the women there goes, one day you're going to be here playing bingo. You're going to win a face cloth or something. Yeah. And you're going to think it was the best day of your life. I was like, are you Are you out of your mind? Like, And then sure enough, six weeks later, I'm sitting there and I won a bunch of chocolate logs in the bingo. And I was like, yes, like the best day (laughs) I ever had, you know, like just the best day, you know, the little Uh, things, the little things, the simple little things when you learn to let go of of all the what everything that's spinning around, you know. And it's a cycle because some of those little things, if people put them in place, might support them not to get to the place where they have to go into hospital. Yeah, yeah, of course. Know? Yeah, yeah. And having those connections and, and putting those things, I would call them like wellness tools, you know, you've but, wellness tool But exactly, and, that's how I know mm. I'll never be that sick again. Like, yeah. that's how I know I'm never going back down that road. I will be sick again. Mm. It's recurrent depressive disorder. It's unavoidable. Mm. You know, I have to accept that. You know, I'm going to get sick again. But I'll never be that bad again. Yeah. Like, as soon as it kicks in now, I know exactly who to speak to, where to go, how to manage it. You know, what meds I'm supposed to be on, uh, who to pick up the phone to, what friends to contact immediately, you know, yeah. wh- where to get the reassurance. So that's how I know it'll never get that bad again. Yeah. So the next time I get sick, which I will, it, three weeks maybe, a month, I don't know. But that's it. You know, I'm never going down a, a six, seven, eight, 12 month black hole. Like yeah. it's just never going to happen. So you're right. Like it's definitely get those things in place and yeah. and it is avoidable. And for us, it's about having the conversation. And I suppose, um, and that's what this campaign is about. It's about thinking about it's some simple walking down the street and ha- like connecting in with someone or about thinking, and I know I've done it, who could do with a phone call today? Like yeah. how, and I don't have to be an expert and you've shown us that. Like people don't have to be an expert. They can, they just have to be there or, or see someone or listen to someone or just have like, and it doesn't have to be a chat about mental health. Like we say that a lot. Like we're saying, have a conversation. It could be about curtains. Like it doesn't have to be about mental oh, health. Oh yeah, like, yeah. No, just, you know, just or the chatting. football or the whatever. Yeah. And you walk away from that and you feel good, like. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Um, and just, I suppose I want to ask you, like, people say, how are you, in so many different ways, right? So you get the, well, what's the crack? <laughs> yeah. You know, how are How's you, lad? Yeah. What's the story? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any, uh, I'm doing. Strange, yeah. How do you, how does PJ Gallagher um, ask people, how are you? Uh, genuinely, it dep- genuinely, it not only depends on the person, but it depends yeah. on the mood. So, like, it's gen- pretty much normally, it's just, how are you, how's it going, what's the crack? And if we get into any conversations or if anyone tells me anything, so, you know, someone's saying they're oh, they're really not enjoying their work, then honestly, the question is, yeah, but how are you, though? You yeah. know, and whatever about the job, how are, how, how are you getting on? Like, are you all right with it or what's your plan through yeah. it all? I'd ask that question an awful lot. Like, you know, people say, like when a friend of mine, her, her mother died, you know, it was all about, I have to do this, I have to do that, I have to do that. It's like, yeah, but what are you going to do? for yourself or okay. how are you going to get time out and all of this or what are you going to do to look after yourself you know these are questions I ask a lot now so it really is dependent yeah. on the situation like even when people are saying you know oh I'm going to go out and I'm going to I'm going to Spain I'm going to get wrecked for three weeks and it's going to be amazing I can't wait it's going to be the crack you know even then I'll go yeah well just like remember 
Take a break or, you know, if you start getting the sweats there, it's all right not to drink every day. And, you know, if if anything changes, give me a ring or, you know, so there's, there's a lot of that sort of talk happens. And are people, (laughs) do people respond well? They do, yeah, 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 genuinely they do. I think they're not used to being asked like that. You know, they're used to saying, oh, I hate my job or this guy's doing my head in and he's, and this fella's a, uh, whatever, he's wrecking my head or, you know, or I'm fighting with me partner and they're doing all this crap and they're doing all this and like, don't know what I'm supposed to do. What do they want me to do better? And, you know, and they're not used to people saying, yeah, what like in spite of what they're doing, like, yeah. like what, what, what are you going to do or how are you going to make it better or how are you, you know, or what can I do? Is there anything I can do? Do you want, do you want to like try and get more time out of it all? Like, you know, those questions, like yeah. just trying to make it focus on, the person and not the story, I suppose. Yeah, brilliant. And look, just want to say thanks a million. Like, you're so no, bloody you. honest. Um, well, you it's know, a bit late now. I couldn't yeah, yeah, I can yeah. say I didn't. I can only say I don't know who that yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? Why are you talking about? What? Yeah. But look, and thanks yeah, I've because... I've always been grand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to sell tickets. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely would have gone to that show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but just to say thanks a million, honestly, for giving us the time being honest, because I do think you are supporting people to start the conversation. And I think it's really important. And conversation, there's power in it, like, you know, and a small conversation can make a big difference in someone's life. And it's also so so liberating, Mm. you know, like when you've been feeling so bad and you're keeping secrets, like there's nothing worse than keeping secrets, you know. Uh, Blowing that all open and then realising the world doesn't end. It is very liberating, you know. Uh, That's the only thing is, once you start, it's very hard to stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're meeting people you haven't met for 20 years and they're like, how are you getting on? Oh, we're on now, but I had a mental breakdown there last year. You you can't stop yourself. You know, it becomes part of your thing, you know. That'll die down as well, though. That'll die down as well. Although I did meet a man in Black Rock, this L boy, and he said he was in Pats for, he said he did like a a good stretch now, Mm. 10 months or something, you know. And he was saying, now just get ready for the rest of your life. No one is going to trust that you're proper well. Oh, Uh, really? Really? And he goes, get ready. Everyone you meet now is going to be, and are you all right? Yeah, yeah, And he's yeah, right. Yeah. It does happen. But like, I mean, small price to pay yeah. to make sure oh, to have people looking out for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah So that's yeah. not a big deal. And and again, it's kind of funny, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm exactly. all right. Well, I think I feel better than you, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> if you want to scare the bejesus out of people, just say that. I'm not feeling great. Like, yeah. Oh my God, Jesus. Here he, <laughs> yeah, here he yeah, goes yeah, again. Here he goes, that? yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, so, look, listen, thanks a million. And that was a good chat. And I hope on the day of Hello, How Are You, you'll be going around. No one will be safe. You'll be asking everyone how they are. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll be plaguing people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All yeah. over the internet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to tag Mental Health Ireland. Of course yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thanks, PJ. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks Thank so you. much for Cheers. having me.